Is that live first or should you I? Can. Hello everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get it on my phone real quick. Why? Because you can't see the comments live. You can. Oh, you have to move. You got to scroll. Hey, people are coming on. And you can invite on that end as well. Yeah. This is gonna be another good that, call. Hey, Lauren. Um. Let's see where it says Hazel's gonna live. Okay, so you know the drill, invite your team members, invite your friends that are in the team. I'm just trying to get on my phone to invite. Yeah, I'm doing that too. But it doesn't say I'm live yet, no, so. It doesn't say I'm um, live. We'll see. I hope everyone's well, having a nice is... evening. Oh, look, Dan Francis is live. Dan. There we are. If I go on here, Ooh. I'm going to say I'm live. Well, see. Right, I don't want to like. No, because that would just cause. This is good. sorry. I was going Craziness. live on my phone. We're, we're here. Yay! We're getting lots of hellos. Hey, everyone. Okay, we we'll wait for a few more people to come on, and then anyone can catch us up on replay, and they can yeah. just forward in a little bit, so they don't have to Hello, look at all the welcomes. So how many have we got on so far? So, um, the hellos. Yeah, we'll give it another minute. Let a few more Let people me, jump I'm just on. trying to get on so I can invite people. So I'm going to invite you guys on. I'll do the hellos. Who we got on? Um, why not moving? That's frozen. Hold on a minute. Comments are sticking. So I can't see. Oh, Lauren, you're the first one. Morning. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Kat. Hey, D. Hey, Brooke. Hey, Denise. We also got Melanie, Tammy. You just do it if you're reading it. You I am reading it. Actually I am. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Jax. Hey, Jax. <laughs> hey, Jax. How are you? Hey, Jace. How are you? Are you how's your holiday, mate? Are you had a good time? Hey, Kayla. Hey, Hayley. I found it. I found it. Hey, Hayley. That's weird. I can hear myself. Hey, Jordan. <laughs> how do you invite people? Can't see the option. If you go down to the, if you're on your phone, bottom left of the screen, it will say share. Press that. Then slide it up when it says copy link. And, and then, then you can invite. And then you it's, can see people. It's changed. So turn you it have around. To slide turn it around up. and show people. So when you're on it. Oh, how does it make this work? Hold on a second. Oh no. no! When you're on it, basically just go to the bottom where it says share, no, no. and then slide share. up, and then you can invite people. Yeah. So let me just invite away a little bit. Cat's in. I'm here, cat. Don't worry. Cat's just invited me. <laughs> just invited. Hey other. Jenny. Oh, I'm inviting random people. Hey Leanne. Hey Roxy. Hey Nelda. Cool, we've got loads on. Hey Nazara. This is going to be such a good call, by the way. Yeah, it's that's going to be why a good I'm one. really like just want to. Jason, yeah, I had to, so on. so on Sunday. I mean, we know that it always goes down well with me. And I, look at my skin again. This is how good the Lumi Spa is. Look at my skin. I have no makeup on. Look how look my skin after using the Lumi Spa for like a few days is incredible. But yeah, so after you've done a call Sunday, I remember on the live I was like, oh yeah, me and Hayes will do a live training Tuesday, and I thought. Literally yesterday, right, what can we do on a foot? Right, we're going to do on 10 steps from day one in the business to having a huge Blue Diamond Team Elite organization. What are the 10 steps you need to go through? And we've, we've, been, we've wrote them down over dinner earlier. And literally, how we, obviously on paper, it seems so simple. We know it's hard work, but the breakdown is so simple and straightforward. So Please get you. Obviously, people can watch this call back, but try to get as many on this call live now because this is going to be really, really good info. We're not going to go on too much longer because we've already been talking for nearly four minutes. And when people are watching this back, it's, you know, the start is always a little bit boring. Um, so we always want, you know, try and get as many people on the call and we're going to get started. So, okay, let's just, we just get started now. Um, yeah, Dan, believe it or not, had this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I need my microphone. Should I, no. should, I, should I go get my microphone? No. <laughs> um, Dan actually had this idea of why don't we break it down into kind of like the journey of the business, like from day one where you start and you're like, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm excited and running with it. I literally where going through milestones that might be a confusing or like you're not sure if you're on the right path type of moment or then you're you've hit diamond blue diamond team elite so we've kind of broken down the whole journey and then we're going to share 
our our tips um on that journey as well. I can do that way. Yeah. Um why not, Jax? She said no, don't get my microphone. Uh, I agree. Okay, so the first one, so get your pen and paper yeah. ready. Step one. Because we're gonna do it in steps so you can write it down, we can stay on track, and then you can go away and process it. Um but I think as we go through it you'll be like, Yes, this and, connects with and me. And you know what? We may even add this as a file on October, this is how good we think this is, that we may even add this as a file, you know, because obviously, you know, just to give you guys a bit of inspiration as you're going through things. Okay, so, so number one. one, okay, just right, just signed up. So number one, step one of your journey is you've just signed up. And uh, sometimes it can be, you're either a little bit, I'm, I'm excited, but I don't know what to do, or you might be someone that just jumps in um, head first, you know, let's just do this, I'll learn on the way. You might be someone that sits back and thinks, oh, I think I need to learn everything first, I'm a bit too scared to to actually start, I'm not sure what we need to do. So what me and Dan are gonna do is, I'm gonna give you a tip, Dan's gonna give you a tip, okay? So number one is, you've just signed up, okay? What What so now, tip. what's next? So, your tip, so that's up. number one. Mm. So, so, the, so the tip is sign up, that's how that's tip. <laughs> The first journey is just signed up. So then my tip is this, and I've said this before on calls, is the four E's. So energy, excitement, and engagement is what's going to build your environment. It's what's going to build your business. So when you've just signed up, it doesn't matter that you don't know very much. It doesn't matter that you can't really navigate around the website yet because you're not sure where everything is and you're still learning it. And um, it doesn't matter if you, you feel a little bit uncomfortable. You're thinking, oh, what, you know, what, is, am I going to get any sales? Anyone going to be interested? That doesn't matter. Don't think about any of that. Bring energy, bring excitement, bring engagement, and that is going to build your business when, when you don't know anything. Because when I first joined, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I was having so many questions asked at me, and I was just kind of going with it. Um, and I just had so much excitement around that. And people wanted to join me, and they wanted to buy a product from me just because I was excited about what I was doing. And that leads the way with pretty much everything. So that's my tip for it. And you're going to add on yours. So. As, hey, as you guys know, the, so the four E's, energy, excitement, engagement, and it creates your environment. But all of that means absolute jack shit if you're not going to take action. It's so, you know, simple. There's two things, right? The biggest action takers get the biggest results, but also they don't get the biggest results if they're not focused on the right environment. So you need both of these two things, okay? So there's no put. So many people when I've just signed up, they're so excited and they'll tell their sponsor how excited they are about the business. They'll be in a group chat, they'll tell everyone in the group chat about how excited they are, but they won't go and tell the people who matter. So this is the biggest thing, guys. When you've got someone new that started, you know, they're telling you how excited they are. They're telling their, you know, maybe people in the group chat how excited they are to be here. They're commenting on the video how excited they are. Get them out there telling everyone else how excited they are. You know, start taking action instantly. You know, like when we both joined the business, day one, we took instant action. Now, you ask anyone that's had uh, a lot of success is what did they do day one? And they'll all say the same thing. We literally ran with it from day one. We took a lot, a lot of action. Now, I know sometimes when you sign someone up, it can be you're really, you're really geared up to get them moving and you, you know, you're really trying to get them taking action. It can be a little bit harder to demotivate people. But the biggest thing what I do when I get someone started is literally say from day one, let's get out there now talking about people, talking to people. Because if you procrastinate, it's not going to happen for you. Okay. Okay, so that's the first one, I'm just getting signed up, is just bring that energy, bring that engagement, bring that excitement, start taking action with that, like take, take the action along with it. That's really when you just signed up is all you need to do. You don't know all the skills yet. All you have, which is what you can rely on, is your own passion and excitement for what the future can hold for you, because you don't, don't know anything else yet. Don't let people mistake where they're like right i've just signed up now i'm going to go buy a bunch of business cards i'm going to go away design business cards i'm going to go learn the products there's 600 products you're not going to learn the products it's i i we don't even know what the ins outs of half the products you know we know a lot of them are not oh, because there's 600 of them you're never going to know literally get out there share your excitement day one is the biggest tip 
So number two, which is kind of the journey following on that you've just signed up, is then what you need to do, number two, is you need to start building a customer base. So that is, some people get really stuck in, I've heard you can make a lot of money in network marketing. I've heard that I need to, you know, build a team straight away if I, if I want to earn that. And so many of you will agree with me of this because we've all been in this boat. You sign someone up, they do nothing. You sign someone up, they ignore you. You sign someone up, they might even block you, even though you've said nothing to them. And this is my whole point is if you purely focus on sponsoring and recruiting, you're not building any volume. You're not building any organic volume. And you really, from the start, want to start building organic volume because then you can teach that as well. And it doesn't mean that it's going to come to you straight away. Like this is a business, you kind of need to find um, your way of doing things, which is exactly what I'm going to touch on. Um, so just remember that isn't actually all about sponsoring and recruiting and that's just a that's just a small part of it the bigger part of it is having a customer base because that is where your volume comes from you don't want to rely on promotional volume and what i mean by that is where your team is buying themselves products or there's a new product out and the team go crazy over it that is great i love the energy it's fabulous but it's not organic volume. And if you want your, you know, this business to be a, a long-term solution um, for you and your family, that's where you need to focus on. So number two is building a customer base. And here is my tip, is find the way that you want to build. Many people come into this business and they're like, I just want lots of money. So they're doing a bit of everything and they're not too sure exactly what they're doing. They're not really giving 100% to everything because they're like, well, I might do like some product showcases. I'm definitely going to post on social media and then I'm going to get some leaflets. I'm going to take them into my work. And their brain is in overload and they're just so focused on I want money, I want money they don't even know how they want to build the business. So this is the first thing you need to decide when building a customer base. The first thing is decide how you want to build your business. So if you say, I 100% want to build my business through social media, you need to be sure that's the way you want to build. If you say, I really want to build um, my business through pamper parties, product showcases, going um, to stores and fairs, then be 100% that's how you want to build your business. And then when you are sure and you've decided how you want to build your business that fits in with your lifestyle and your family, then you figure out what are the steps I need to take. But it's, it's one of the things that I always look at people when they're like, can I have some help? I feel like I'm not getting any sales. And I'm like, how do you want to build your business? Oh, well, I'm not sure. I'm going to book like a couple of product showcases and I am posting on Facebook. But I'm like, but how do you want to build so my tip is discover and work out how you want to build because even if it is social media as long as you know that's the way it might take a long time to grow it but you need to be 100 sure how you want to build your business to build that customer base okay so now regardless of however you've decided to build your business whether you're focused on social media whether you're focused on at home parties you know whatever you decide whatever your focus is you have to use the products, okay? It is so difficult to talk about a product if you haven't used it. You know, you're, you haven't got any passion for it. Now, you know, think about every time I've been on the live recently, past two lives, and all I've spoken about is a Lumi Spa because I'm finding it incredible because I'm using it. So I'm going to go talk, you know, the hind legs off a donkey about that product. You know, I can talk about the 180 range. So I use them every day. I can talk about the Pharmanex range because I use that every day. But if I didn't use them, I wouldn't be able to talk about them. You know what I mean? So it, when you use your products, you'll find a passion with it. Now, the thing is, this is what I said to people before, right? is that you may be using some of the top sellers and you know but you might not love them but they might be the top sellers but they might not be your products for your audience so you know i know people on here that have sold bucket loads of tr90 shakes and even i know one of our executive lawrence she sells the um the body spa don't was it the dermatic, dermatic, effects. dermatic effects cream 
buy the ton of it you know um because she she used it loved it got results it spoke about it passionately and now people buy it off her religiously you know what i mean like i in my first month when i got to executive hazel announced me as executive as mr idealize because i sold so many of them because that was one of my favorite products and i literally spoke to everyone and everyone about it because i was so in love with the product you know you speak to Anyone that's got great success with products is because they're products that they use and they love. You know what I mean? So if you're if you're posting about products and you don't know what it does, you have no passion behind it, people can tell that. When you're talking to someone about a product, they will buy into you just because of your passion. But if you're if you're literally talking to someone, you're like, oh, yeah, I love this Vita Coco. It's a really, really good product. People aren't going to buy it off you. But if you start going really into good detail about what it does for you, how you love about it, how you feel about it, people are going to feel your energy. So whether yeah. you're on social media, at home parties, fairs, whatever it is, use the product. You know, invest in yourself and in your business because they are good. They're incredible products. So even if you're treating yourself, Treat yourself once a month to a new product, to something new off the website, you know, whatever it is, just treat yourself to something new every single month. And then, then you will find that you may love something that you've never known before or that it's not a big seller. And then that could be your thing. That could be your great big seller. Yeah, I agree. Um, and if you just think about what Dan said as well, you're bringing the energy into it. People can feed off it. You're bringing that excitement and energy and they want to try it because you're excited about it. Um, so definitely be a product of the product. You have to try them. And I always say I'm very much a person that when I started this business, um, I didn't have any money to invest. So for me, it was out of the question to buy a kit or, you know, a product showcase kit. It was actually a thousand pound kit um, when the kits were going around in the UK. I didn't have that type of money and I wasn't willing to invest in to invest that when I didn't even know new skin. I didn't have that trust in the company yet. I didn't have that trust um, in in the products yet. So I started very slowly with the products. Although I moved very fast and I sold a lot of products, I just started with I'm just going to buy a toothpaste to try. So I always say like this, it doesn't matter whether you have money to invest or no money to invest. We, we can figure out a way how to make it work. And then when you're making retail profits, that's when you just invest the retail profits into your business, if that makes sense. And, and Jordan made a really good point there as well, which is so true, is that people trust your, your own before and after pits on Facebook than to do someone else's. If you're constantly posting other people's images, now don't get me wrong, I, when I ever take a picture of a galvanic spa, I can never get a good before and after picture when I do it myself. So when I, well, I can visually see one, so I use other people's pictures, but I always will still post my own so people can see I'm using it. You know, people will trust your own before and after teeth photos or, you know, you, whatever product you're using, people will trust your own pictures first and then be utilizing other people's pictures as more of a testimonial style post because your audience are gonna, if, they, if you're posting other people, people's, I don't know, teeth for instance, all the time, they're going to be like, well, where's yours? Do you use it? But you're recommending this to me. And you're going to be like, oh, uh, no. So what you want to be doing is using yours and then using other people's as more like a backup one for it. And if you're new, all you say is, oh, I can't wait to try this. Does anybody want to try yeah. it with me? Here's um, some of my business partner's results or here's some other customer's results. So you you can make it work um, whether you've tried it or not tried it. Um, it's just the way you word it and how you feel about it. Yeah, and just so very quickly. Quicker. Yeah, I just want to touch on what Debbie's, what Debbie says a great point about the beauty box now. It's brilliant for new people to invest in when their products uh, profits are in. What Roxy said is there was a really good point about it. the ADR. If you've got an ADR, it's a really good way to build up your own personal yeah, products. Yeah, we won't talk about that yet, though, because this is just yeah. the, when you're starting the business. Um, so number three, we're at number three down. So we've just signed up. You're now going to work towards building the customer base. You're kind of on this journey. And then number three in your journey is more like, okay, so I kind of want to start building a team. I want to help people do what I'm doing, like win-win type of thing. So we I, we have some tips. We're going to be really quick because we spent 18 minutes already. Um, so my tip, I actually have two, but I'll do one first, is 
the beauty of focusing on customer is when someone has um, an experience, they're using the product, so they have an experience, they have a result, it is so much easier to talk to them and say, have you ever thought, you've had such great results with this, have you ever thought about actually becoming a distributor um, and sharing this even more with your friends, families, colleagues, social media, whatever it might be, um, what relates to them. Converting a um, customer into a distributor is like a winning a winning success to me like I love it it's just there's no pain behind it there's no like oh you know okay need to get us to try the products need to you know build that trust there they've already got the trust they've had an experience they've had results they love it now let's talk about how they can make money with something that they love as well so for me I love the whole theory of converting customers into distributors now um so for, for me, a lot of people when they want to build a team, so you, so as Hazelwood said, you, you know, you signed up, you, you shared your energy, you've got your customers, the next step you're thinking, right, I want to start earning some bigger commissions. So you're going to need to start getting to executive for that, right? Now, my point always, always people, so if you really want to get to executive and you really want that bigger income, you cannot be scared to talk to people. So many people, they, they, they stop themselves from receiving the bigger commissions that they deserve because they're scared of other people's opinions. Now, I'm really sorry to say this, but let me break the news to you guys. Other people's opinions won't pay your bills. So you cannot be scared to, to of anyone else's opinion what is the worst someone is going to say to you if you're speaking to them about the business what's the very worst thing they can say to you they can tell you where to go and block you you know that's not painful sometimes it can be okay if you get a few of them it can be a little bit like oh you know everyone's saying no to me but if you're really and we've done this call cool recently about your definite purpose if you understand fully your definite purpose and you know exactly what you want to achieve you're not going to be scared what anybody will say to you okay so you need to get out there messaging people talking to people and and growing your organization i have people saying no to me a lot okay you know i i get a lot of negative responses but it's just the way it is you know because some people don't understand this so it's our i don't like saying job but it's our kind of role when we're doing this is to educate people on what it is that we do and that's it you know so so if you say so you don't be scared what people are going to say because because people are not being scared what someone is going to say and allowing someone else's opinion to hold you back you're doing yourself a disservice what you want to be doing is saying do you know what I don't care what people say because I know what I deserve and I know what I'm going to go out and get and you're going to go out there and get it. So don't be scared to talk to anybody. It, just You've got no fear. You're proud of what you do. You love your products. You, love, you know it's a good company. You love being here. So don't be scared to talk to anybody. And just to tie that, my second one, which ties exactly with into Dan, is to help with your mindset with this. And I'm actually going to do a public live about this on my business page that's kind of aimed to network marketers. Um, I find that the network marketing industry has set people up. You hear it time and time again. Go for no. Everyone's scared of no. You don't need to fear no. And I, the part, I've had this brainwave the past couple of days. We aren't scared of the word no. We don't fear the word no. Because I used to always say, um, we learned this last year actually, that if you knew that everybody would say yes to you, would you talk to them? And everyone was like, yeah. And I was like, well, you're, it's because you're scared of no. And I've kind of changed that, my perception of that a little bit now. Because I think about it, and we're not scared of the word no. Um, because if everybody said to us, oh, do you know what, thanks for thinking of me, but no thank you, it's not for me right now. We wouldn't be offended, we wouldn't be hurt, we wouldn't be put off, you know, we'd carry on what we're doing. So we're not scared of the word no. We don't fear the word no. What we seem to fear is someone's attitude towards us. We're not scared of them saying no, we're scared of what their attitude is going to be. Most people are scared of being told to fuck off and it's, being blocked. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the attitude that people have. We're not scared of the word no, because if people say no politely, we're like, okay, cool, mm. like, thanks for chatting. We're scared of people's attitudes. And then that's a mindset thing that to work on and to help overcome. But we, we can touch on that further in depth on a, a different call. So that's number three. I'll do this one. Do number so, four? Yeah, so number four. So you've gone through it. You've signed up. You've got your customer base. You're starting to build a team. The next step in the in this journey is reach an executive, right? So 
how do we do this okay so for me it is so simple you know yes getting to executive is hard but the thing is and that's what i love what lauren just said there but the thing is okay guys when you get into executive how you do this and you know i'm all about this it's tracking your volumes tracking your points knowing exactly what you need when you need it how are you going to get it? So if you're going for executive across a three month period, you know, month 1000, month two, 1500, month three, 2000. Simple. You need to be writing that down, breaking it down weekly, breaking it down daily, and then treating every single day like it's month end. Remember, your points can come from you and your business partners, you know, within your circle group. So what you need to be doing, you need to be aiming for your GSV. So how you get that is by helping other people hit their goals, by helping them track points, helping them set goals a bit. And it's all about tracking. If you can start developing good business skills now by tracking, goal setting, and um and working with with your business partners then when you get to executive and beyond you're already going to have these skills behind you when you get beyond this is you're going to really have a solid foundation in your business now you've already heard me talk about foundation about the foundation of business that's stage two of how to build a successful business okay if you're doing the four 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 tiers for it so you need to learn to build your foundations now and how you do that is purely by tracking points my whiteboard now is still all covered in people's volumes what i'm tracking it's no different than day one it was just my own i was tracking and now it's hundreds of people's i'm tracking you know and that will start with you guys day one you'll be tracking your own points and then day 752 you'll be tracking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people's points. It's just, you know, it has to always starts off with one, so track your own, then track other people's and so forth and so forth. And Dan has calls on this, there's calls in the, um, the pin post as well. If you need help with like the 90 day goals, with, with tracking your points and what you need to, um, what you need to be focused at, have a look at the videos or message Dan, he can help guide you through it and we're coming up with some things that launched in the first October that will help that anyway. But I'm just conscious of time. So number five, um, or oh, my tip on that, um, is to support your downline. And that's an obvious one, is just be there for them. Check in on them, see if they need any help, see how their day's gone. Um, if they want help with accountability, just communicate uh, with your downline, um, uh, support your downline, and that can be um, in a different way of things, whether that's just a group chat, whether that's one-on-one -on -one chats, whether that's getting on a call, even all if, different even things. Even a shout-out post on Facebook, yeah, that's a huge one. Recognition is a huge one. So number five in the journey is then maintaining. So you've hit executive, now you're maintaining executive. And we'll be really, really quick on this one because the more in-depth than the other ones is – Nothing changes here, so don't stop. Many people think, I've done it, and it's a bloody huge achievement. It's a huge milestone, and we have to celebrate that because that is freaking amazing that you've hit executive, but don't stop, okay? We always say that's when it really begins. Like, this is when it starts heating up a little bit more. Do not stop when you get there. You need to learn to maintain and then grow, and then maintain and then grow, and then maintain and then grow. So you... <laughs> <Spot down. laughs> so do not stop when you get there you no know, one thing i always love right whenever i help any of, help any of our guys get to executive and we announce them the first night they hit executive they're bouncing off the walls buzzing i love it the energy is incredible but what i love doing is the first message i send them the next morning is always good morning executive now the real work starts are you ready for it because now all, all you have to do is do more of what you've done in the beginning when you had your customer when you're getting your customer base when you was recruiting just do more of it to maintain it is so simple what so many people do and i've seen this mistake happen so many times okay so many times is people hit executive and they're like done it boom mic drop and then they don't do no work like it's crazy. Executive is the first step. Now, yes, it's hard work to get to executive. It really, really is. But the workload increases by that. But what also happens is the returns get bigger. And that's the beauty of this business is, yes, it won't well, trust me. It, we will talk about how hard it gets soon. It gets way harder, but the returns get more rewarding. So when you get to executive, you don't stop. Things don't change. And I've done this on another time management call as well. So go back in, this, in the pinned post. Have a look at my time management call. I've done this there. When you're, when you're getting to executive, 
there is essentially like two things you need to focus on sales recruits when you reach executive two things you need to focus on sales recruits simple mm -hmm. so many people fall into time management mode get to executive ah now i'm going to create a facebook group for my team ah now i'm going to create them loads of content ah i'm going to go to this i'm going to go to that you don't need to it's all there for you you leverage people like us and the user stuff we're creating and then you have way more time to, to, to do the sales and recruiting yeah and many people um are in the depth of our organization so you've literally got like literally six uplines there um that you know are doing all the management mode for you they've got the content the training materials the calls set up uh, the group set up the chat set up um so you don't need that straight away when you get a bigger team you need to be in more of a community but then you don't need it just then if that makes sense so number six and i can't wait to talk about this is we've signed up we're, we're going to work on building a customer base we're going to start building a team we've reached executive we're learning to maintain and then all of a sudden number six is confusion and overwhelm hits in we don't know what we're doing all of a sudden we feel like we're not clear on anything we feel like we're distracted um distracted we're not sure what we're doing we're not sure if we're on the right path um uh, we, we start making we're in management mode we start making leadership mistakes too many people want to jump from like executive to ruby to blue diamond and not even think about the fact they just got to start maintaining the 3000 volume yet you know um no it's just yeah the confusion and the overwhelm sets in i don't know why it happens it happens to everyone it's pressure it, it, it's, it's, it's it might pressure. be the pressure, pressure that you know wow you, you're hitting this thing you're building a team and now other people are asking all these questions and and then you get you start tuning into different calls and maybe people say different things i don't know or you're tuning into um network marketing other you know other people in network marketing and you're picking up tips from them and then all of a sudden you become so distracted that you don't know the, the basics and the foundations of what to do and all of a sudden you feel like I don't know how to duplicate I'm not sure what I need to teach people I don't know how to get people started anymore you go through this stage which we decide to call confusion and overwhelm and um, so we've got some we will touch on some bits but all, some you need, tips. all you need to do is so simple is focus on the same thing you did at the beginning and that is sell products and bring people into the business so many people, I see so many people make the mistake over and over again. They'll be like, they'll, they'll be focused, they'll do so well getting to executive by purely focusing on selling products and bringing people into the business and helping and helping those guys do the same. Those simple three things, right? Then what happens? Then they get to executive. They fall into like a leadership position, which is great because you are turning, you're turning into a leader. Then what people do is start to feel the pressure of leadership because they feel think a lot's expected of them. They might start tapping into other calls, like Hazel said, and then the confusion sets in. And when confusion sets it sets in, inactivity starts because you're confused. You're like, what the hell do I do? Just do what you did in the beginning. Sell products. Bring people into the business and help them do the same. That is all you need to do. You just need to do more of it. Like I said, I see it. I've seen it so many times, and I get a bit passionate about it because it drives me bonkers how the fact that people, you know, and I made the mistake as well. You get to executive and you're like, yeah, boom, my job done it. I'm an executive. Life's easy now. I'm great. Twenty five grand average amount of blue diamond wages just around the corner for me life's going to be sweet and then you realize ah shit i've got to i've got to maintain three thousand now this is getting hard and then you're like oh no i don't know what to do and then instead of just thinking right i'm just going to go do more of it we, the we've got frontline executives that that maintain three thousand quite comfortably you know by themselves or with one or two team members because all they do is done exactly what they did on day one so many people as well when they get to executive stop selling and focus on just yes, that's team a big building one. that's and, huge and i tell you what don't make that mistake because it, it winds me up because because you, know, you have to be the example we, and... still, we, we still sell products now like okay sell, sales isn't the biggest percentage of our focus because you know we have other focuses so you, you're you're again tune into my time management call i'll go through this your your percentage of time shifts okay but so you but you don't still stop selling products so many people say to me oh, i'm not i'm not focused on sales i'm just building a team but why where's your points going to come from mm -hmm. how how can you teach your team where's your volume um if, if you don't know how to do it yourself if you're and not it, selling you can't teach it and it's okay isn't it if um you're not 
if you don't even get that much yeah, response. Yeah. But it's just setting the, the example of, well, I am making the effort. I'm putting it in my daily methods of operation that I'm posting X amount of times a day. Whatever it may look like about customer, it's just showing that you are doing the basics that after the compound effect kicks in, you'll start getting rewarded for. I had a sit down lunch with some of our uplines uh, Carl Eric and Ingle Lindstrom, they pioneered Europe. They've got 90% of the European market is their downline. So pretty much everybody in EMEA is in the downline. Carl Eric was telling me, okay, now they've been in the business 25 years, retired 14 years. Carl Eric was telling me they still have customers and they still do about 500 PSV a month through customers themselves, right? So even those guys, I'll, de I'll go into a bit more depth of you one to one. Yeah, we'll so e even um, Kyle Eric and Inga, 25 years in the business, still have about 500 PSV a month coming in for customers. Now you think, as an executive, if you get 500 PSV, you know, and you're helping other people get their own PSV, you're helping more people do it, that 3,000 comes easily to get you hit your maximizer. Okay, so you don't stop selling. So many people, they hit executive, then next day, well, I'm just going to go build a team now. But why? Where's your points going to come from? We've always focused on customer. I know that me and Dan's only been in the business, well, I say only, it's feels like we've always done it together, <laughs> but over a year, and I've been in the business two and a half years. So even from um, when I was on my own in the business to even now as a joint account, um, my highest GSV has, has, was nearly 60,000 GSV in one month. And our lowest has, what, been 14? 14 or 15? I can't remember exactly. My, high, so my always, highest on my own was, was 20,000. Was 20, we've always maintained a high GSV just because we really focused in our circle group about products and, and customers and how much we love using um, products. And I that get, just duplicates naturally without even um, being conscious of it, if that makes sense. I'll give you a tip. Okay, that's a big tip. Our industry is called direct sales. There's a key word there, direct sales. <laughs> it's not direct recruiting, it's direct sales. So sales always has to be at the forefront, okay, of what everyone does. When people say to me, what should I do time management? The first thing I always say to people do is you work on your sales and your recruiting. They're the first two things, or recruiting and sales. Everyone, the volume producing, recruiting, sales, sales, recruiting. They're the biggest things you need to be doing. Direct sales. Okay. Okay. Next tip. So number seven is you know then you're gonna you want to start creating executives, and we'll keep this really short and sweet because we're going over time a little bit. But create executives is really about repeating your you know, your whole journey from sign up to starting building the customer base to then start building a team, reaching the executive, maintaining it, feeling a little bit confused. The so people are going to go through the same journey as what you're going through. So if you want to create executives, you just help teach them to get started. You help teach them, here's some ideas of how to build a customer base, but I want you to choose how you want to do it and then I'll help support you. But this is your business and you make the decisions. Um, so you kind of, help repeat that, you help repeat the, get some energy, get some excitement, get some engagement. You just repeat your journey. So all you do, you do exactly what you did. It's simple, mm -hmm. you know, you, 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 you sell products, you bring people into the business, and you teach them how to do the same. Then you're gonna teach someone else how to do exactly that. And that's all what you do to help create executives. Nothing changes, okay? Nothing changes in your time management, because you're still, you're still teaching people to sell and you're teaching people how to recruit. So nothing changes in your time management, you know. It really, really doesn't. People get very overwhelmed and confused by this, but it literally nothing changes. But now, the, now, so the steps, I hope you guys write these down. So number one, just signed up. Number two, building a customer base. Number three, starting building a team. Number four, reaching executive. Five, maintaining executive. Six, the confusion and overwhelming. Number seven, creating sets, uh, uh, um, executives. Now, number eight is one of my favorites, okay? So what you've done now, you're starting to create your executives. The next thing you're going to be looking at doing in this business is qualifying for success trips. The reason I have a lovely tan is because I've just got back from Puglia. So I've been on one. And so for qualifying for success, for success trips, how you do that, help people 
in your organization hit their goals, okay? The more people you help get what they want, the more you're going to help get what you want. If you think about it so simply, you help four people start earning the commissions they deserve by hitting executive, you're going to be qualifying for a success trip, okay? Like I say, we've been on three, Miami, Cape Town, Puglia. The next one's Utah. The next one after that's Croatia Private Island. The next one after that, we voted for it in, um, in Puglia. It's either going to be a private resort in the Swiss Alps. It's either going to be back to Utah or it's going to be um, a place in Tenerife. You know what I mean? So th they look after you. That's EMEA, not, yeah, that, not yeah. Australia so that's or that, yeah. US. So that's, that's, for our EME, well, that's for the Asia. EMEA guys. So the more people you help get what they want, the more you're going to get what you want. So what do you do? You do more of what you were doing anyway. Nothing mm -hmm. again. Nothing changes. If you want to get to Ruby, nothing changes. Of no. what is what happens when you got to executive again? So many people that get to said, "I'm going to get to Ruby. What do I need to do?" Same as what you did. Nothing changes. Do more help of it. Help people build a customer base, and you just help them go through that journey. It really is a simple. And I hope. Um, I know we've got two more to go, but I just hope everyone understands. Actually, we as humans, we have this. I don't know what to call it, this power of complicating every single thing that we do. And really, this is so simple. Um, You've heard me say this on so calls. It's so simple. It's hard work, a lot of hard work, but it is so simple. It's probably the, you know, there's no other business plan or industry out there that is as simple and as straightforward as what our industry does. You've heard me say this on calls so many times. This is the most simple business I've ever been a part of. Mm, now, like you know, it. yeah, so... Um, um, so number eight is qualifying for success trips. Yeah. And to my um, my tip on to, on to add to Dan's was um, don't um, I don't chase pin titles is what I'm basically trying to say overall. Chase the volume and the success trip is just a bonus. I'll share a quick story to do yeah, that. Yeah. When so, I, hold on, let me on. finish. When I joined the business. I had no money. We was in debt. We were very happy. We appreciate everything. We were so grateful. We had so much love, but financially, we didn't have very much. Like the thought of another baby or moving house, I don't know how, the, or if our car broke, I don't know what the hell, you know, we would do type of thing. So I was here because I wanted money. I wanted income and I wanted a nice quality of life. Being awarded a success trip was just a bloody bonus. Like, I've never traveled. It was Miami. I've never been to America. I've barely been out of Europe. Um, so for me, that was just like this amazing bonus. I never did it for a success trip. And I just want you guys to, hopefully you can feel my energy there. Like, chase the volume. Chase the income you deserve. And the success trip is just a lovely little bonus on top. And now I'm going to show you a little story, but for me, and I've, I've shared this before, so I don't mind sharing it again, is that so when I joined, obviously me and when I started, we did things separately. Now when I joined, I got to executive in a month. Um, now after I hit executive in four weeks, like my next goal was just to jump straight to Ruby because I really, really, really wanted to qualify for a success trip. That's all I focus on was just qualifying for a success trip. Now I put all every ounce of energy I had into qualifying for a success trip but guess what it never happened and then I, thought, I kept thinking wow like going from executive to ruby is tough like it's another three executives you need to it's, it's four executives you need to create you know it is tough I, I got lapis really quickly as well i got lapis in like seven or eight weeks and then so i thought oh ruby's going to be easy my next two ones are going to come straight to me and you know but guess what it never come why because i was only ever focused on getting what i wanted but then when I started realizing, hold on a minute, this isn't about me, it's for other people. And I started putting all my time and energy into helping other people. I didn't focus on the success trip. I focused on the money. I focused on volumes. I, I had a set figure I wanted to earn. I've done my 90-day goals. I started focusing on volume, nothing more than that. I started teaching people to do the same. So they was earning good money. Guess what? I was a qualifying Ruby, qualifying Emerald, like in very, very quick succession. And then obviously we, then we merged back in um, March. I think February, March time. No, right, that it? long ago. March, April. I can't remember. It was, yeah, it was Only just a few months ago. Yeah, April, I think it was. Um, so what I was trying to say to you guys, I took my focus off on what off what I wanted, and I focus on the volumes because that's where the money is, and then it happened. So you guys need to do the same. Is is if you focus on getting it right, what is a ruby? It's just someone for executives. What you want to be focused on, if you have the volume, the income, 
pin titles will come naturally and then you get rewarded with a success trip on top of this amazing income that you're earning okay i would much rather be a ruby earning a, a diamond wage than be a ruby with four flat 2000 executives struggling and not making an income off it you know what i mean like that's that's what i'd much rather be and i know many of you guys would be the same we're all here to make money volumes over pin titles totally so number nine again you know, you might not be in this stage yet, but there will be a time where you will be. Um, so it's good to see this journey. So number nine is building a sixth generation organization. So where you're, you've got executive, 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 all different, you know, lapises, rubies, emeralds, diamonds, and um, blue diamonds in the mix, all these levels deep. So we call it, number nine is building a sixth generation organization. And here's our tips. And you can start impl um, implementing these things now because it will, it will benefit you when you do fill all them generations up. My number one thing, and I'm so passionate about it because I've had people do the opposite to me, is let people flourish. If someone is moving fast, they are creating volumes, they are doing it ethic ethically, they are having fun, move out of their way and let them flourish, let them have fun and let them enjoy their business. And, you know, we I feel a little bit bad because there's people in this team where we started saying, you know what, guys, you need to do this, this and this. We're being told to do this, this and this. Like, you guys do this too. You know, I think this will work. Let's do it. And really, it, it just didn't work for us. Like, you have to let people flourish. Get out of their way. Let them find their identity. Let them find their brand. And you let them flourish. And your role is to be the guidance. You're there to guide them when they need you, when they ask for you, when when they've made a mistake and they're like, ah, oh, I've made such a mistake. How do I fix this? Or what do I do if in this situation? Then you're their guidance to help with that. We we moved quicker and faster when we stopped. De de believing or well, doing what other people are telling us to do we moved quicker and faster when we started doing what we knew was right and believing in ourselves and growing and now one thing we, we always look at the whiteboard where we've got different people and we pride ourselves on the fact that we have so many pockets of teams of guys that do their own thing and you use us as like a, a training you leverage us for your training. Central hub you, you, you leverage us for training which is what you should be doing like we pride ourselves on the fact that we have so many leaders that have their own groups and their own that they do their own training they do their own little things because that's amazing it's what you want to be doing you want to create a leadership then the worst thing what you if you're trying if you want to create a six generation deep organization the worst thing you can be doing is trying to control everybody in your organization the second you try to control everybody the second you will lose control okay yeah. the only thing that you ever need to be making sure that duplicates and the only thing you ever need to make sure that you are teaching that everybody's teaching the same is the compensation plan compensation plan and products it's that's it it's because that's what we get paid on so how people earn their how people get their volumes is up some is up to them like you know for instance we have a very very large south african all downline you know so but we can't come in to you guys there and tell you guys how to build in your market we can teach you and we can give you tips and guidance on what we what 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 we what created us success and then what you guys to do is then you know what works in your market and then do you know what i love working with you guys in south africa because then we get to learn what works well in your market same with you guys in australia like i love speaking to you guys in australia south Africa because then I get to learn what works in your market so when we bring someone in new then I can teach those but if I start telling you guys what to do that is the second that I lose out so the only thing i need to make sure that you guys are teaching correctly is the compensation plan and the products one that you're doing things eth ethically and two you're showing people how to get paid and when the money is because the compensation plan doesn't change and you know that won't change for 50 generations deep you know however long you're on a business it's not going to change so at the end of the day all we need to be doing is teaching a conversation plan and teaching people how to sell a product business principles come naturally and that's what we're good at we teach business principles we teach people how to sell products and we teach people how to get paid and as long as you're doing that things are going to happen one thing i always got taught and this is by robert val hagen i always remember this is that you know, and it can be difficult sometimes. So say you've got someone that's one of your business partners in your, in, you know, 
one of your business partners is moving extremely quickly sometimes a bit like oh i well, know i don't want them to go quicker than me if they're moving quicker than you the only thing you need to do is get the fuck out of their way is move out of the way let them run super fast but the only thing you need to do then is try and grab onto their back and keep up to keep up with them and learn from them if they're going quick there's a reason for it find out why what are they doing to get all this crazy volumes and energy don't try to slow them down you know i've seen people make that mistake people made that mistake with me they told me that i was moving too fast and i need to slow down you know and then i questioned myself and i doubted myself i listened then guess what i did slow down and my business slowed down the second i shrugged that off and forgot about it i moved quicker again do you know what i mean so if someone's moving quick let them go let them run as fast as they bloody can because it is their business whenever we join this business we draw we sign an independent new skin distributor agreement meaning we are our own business owners so all we need to be doing let's say big up <laughs> i love that so all we need to be doing okay is allowing people to flourish in their own business the quicker you can allow someone to grow their own wings spread their own wings and fly the more leadership you're going to create and the less work you need to do because of how this business model works mm -hmm. it's so and simple the, having the six generations is basically having a blue diamond team lead organization and you need to create leaders if the back end is all about leadership. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want loads of sheep. You want loads of hungry lions literally going out there and feeding their family like literally like that. Network marketing is meant to be a, was it a six to ten year business model? Yeah, it could Network. be around there, yeah. Around, uh, five, say it's meant to be a five to ten year business model. Meaning between years five and ten, you're going to have a big enough organization that you can retire okay that you can step away from it how can you step away from something if you don't create leaders because you are going to always be doing the work so you want to be creating leaders as quick as possible so that they're doing their own thing they have their own um, they, there you go jenna i love that jenna uh, jenny they have their own like principles they have their own as long as they're doing things ethically nothing matters mm -hmm. do you know what I mean so create leaders because that's creates less work than you if you have one line that, that has a huge that is a, a solid leader has a great thing perfect means you can put energy into your other lines into your other debt organization into other people bringing new people in but if you spend too much time trying to control people you've got no time to build anything else that's I'm just really conscious of time we've been quite a long time so number 10 kind of ties in with it but it's keeping that blue diamond slash team leap momentum. And there was a, remember that graph going around where it says about like you start here, you might have a little dip and then you grow and then you have a dip and then you grow. And it's Robert Bell Hagen that came in and said, you should not teach that to your teams. What you need to teach and implement is that you grow, maintain, grow, maintain. You don't need to have dips. Is that S you want to be level. You want to be level. If anything, like you don't want to dip. It's okay to be level and be level and be level and maintain. You and sometimes you might think, I'm not growing, but it's great because you are maintaining, which means stability. And then you're going to grow a little bit, and then you're going to keep it stable, and then you're going to keep it stable for a while, and then you're going to grow again. They're the steps that you want to take. Um. So down to talk about time management, and we've gone about how it's about others. Um. But you know, I was going to share my little bit of story around this, but no, 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 it's too, it's too, it's too much. Um, so we'll do that a different time. Maybe we can do some calls about just our stories, and that will probably help and motivate yeah. and inspire so many people with like different yeah. stories and backgrounds. Um, so I'll let you do your time management. Bit. Okay, yeah. So one thing I learned, okay, is is maintaining a teamly organization. There is a lot of work involved. Okay, now. I understand that when you join a business, you know, it's hard work. I understand getting to executive is hard work. I understand selling products, recruit people, it's hard work. But but when you're getting to executive or growing executives, you have essentially three things, three things to work about, ah, three things to worry about. That's selling products, bringing people into the business and teaching them to do the same. Okay. No, to focus on, not worry yeah, about. Yeah, focus. yeah, three things, to, three areas to mainly focus on. Okay, now, but when you're when you're looking after a, um, a team elite blue diamond organization and growing it as well as maintaining it, 
There is so many things to do. Now, I took time management for granted when I was on my journey. Now I really understand the power of time management. Like, I've got it, um, I wrote mine down here today. So every, this is my little booklet from uh, from Pulis Success Trip. That's what I've started doing here every day. I wrote down my times, and I wrote down exactly what I'm going to be doing. So yesterday and today was 9.15 a.m. until 11 a.m. was... Was, was my volume producing so in there i was adding people deleting people messaging new people working on instagram and looking for groups then um uh 11 to 12 was looking for going through looking for groups mainly i wanted to start looking for groups and grow my audience through different types of groups 11 to 12 working my frontline executives um, 1 to 2 p.m. working with the surf group, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. working with executives groups. And that has been the same every single day. And then 5 o'clock onwards, uh, sorry, 8 o'clock onwards when little man's in bed, it is then volume producing, anything volume producing and personal and then personal development. But like I said, I, I never understood the power of time management. Now, I had a call with John once, okay, John Sexsmith, mentor. And I was, um, I was stressed out, you know, and I called John. I was like, John, I'm stressing. That I like big time, and then he said, "Your time management's off," and I, I was like, "No, nah, like there, there's more things involved than this, John." Like I was like, "There's way more." He's like, "Your time management's off," and we ran through it, and we broke down my time management. I was like, "Oh yeah," so like my time management. Since my time management's been back settled, I have no stress. I enjoy the business, and I find it easy. Because I'm balancing out everything. Do every night before I go to bed, I write out a to-do list um, and I plan the next day. So so simple. And, and um, when you work with times as well, you kind of you have more urgency, don't you? Yeah, so you know you, like you know you only you know you only have that hour to do that task. So you work with urgency when you give that. And I remember when I first joined the business. So Cody was only two years old. Anyone with a toddler knows what a handful they are. I was also working full time in a really busy job. I did actually really enjoy it. Um, um, worked in a really busy corporate environment, so doing the nursery runs with Cody. I only built my business mainly 8 p.m. at night till the early hours of the morning. So when Cody was in bed, my lunch break, I might have done a little bit, might have done a post in the morning, but my business building was 8 p.m. to the early hours of the morning, and I built a blue diamond organization in six months just by working in the evenings, the early hours, and I gave 100% of my time in the hours that I could commit to. I worked with so much urgency because I've got a two-year-old to look after. I've got a full-time job to go to. Like, if I want this to happen, I have to put 100% into the hours that I can commit because this is the, the beauty of this. You don't need to give 100% of your time to this business or industry. You just give 100% to those hours that you that you can commit to. And like I say, so I hope you guys, there's some, some things that you've picked up on what we're saying here. The main thing is, it's so nothing changes as you're growing your business, okay? Because it's all about um, sales, recruiting, and teaching other people to do the same, okay? That's what it's all about, even when you're trying to get on success trips. Same thing, nothing changes. Guess what? Even now, what, is, what have I just gone from my day there? The first thing I do in my day, sales and recruiting. And then when I'm recruiting, I'm teaching other people to do, to do the same. Nothing there changes, except I'm now having to work for other people. But what I want to say as well, like the biggest thing, what we've picked up here, is it's about others. Now, if you was to see my whiteboard, you would probably see a name of maybe 60 plus people, okay? And all their volumes. And then you'll see a tiny little corner. Now, this white, I would say, six foot before four foot. Oh, well, they asked for me. Oh, yeah, no, that's not this. six foot. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's five <coughs> foot. Probably five foot. Probably foot. No, foot. it's not. I'm taller than that. No, that way, donut. Width. No, I know. Not height. I know you're taller than it height wise. Width wise, donut. <laughs> so, width wise, oh, God's sake. So, width wise, it's probably five foot, okay? Height wise, three foot. And then there's a small section in the corner. What is our volumes the rest of it is all other people's volumes what i'm helping work with people i work with. the small bit is about us and what that shows okay guys is that it is about other people to maintain and grow an organization like this is all about other people i spend all my days every day working with other people to help generate them got them volumes you've heard me talk about the four p's many a time if you haven't 
there's a video on it in success, okay? Four Ps. Number one, profit. The benefit and gain for other people first. The quicker you start focusing on the benefit and gain for other people first, the more you're going to get what you want, okay? And like we said the whole way through, the work gets so much harder, but the rewards get better and better every single time. Like, you guys follow our journeys uh, on, on public on Facebook. You've seen what we've announced today is that we're both going to be speaking at global convention together on stage together, you know. What can be a bigger reward than that? There's only out of, I think, nearly, nearly 20,000 people, there's only like 12 people been asked to speak and two of them are us two. You know, that's a huge honour. Obviously, the, the, the income, you know, that's great. The success trips, we get great. The biggest reward we get is the freedom and the choices to make. You know, that is the biggest thing for me, is the freedom to do what we want when we want to do it. The fact that we can travel, the fact that we can spend Cody. The fact is, now we're taking Cody to school, is that both of us can do it every morning. And we've even had a parent said to Hazel when I wasn't there, what does Dan do? Probably, so I went, when does Dan work? Probably thinking I'm a bum that doesn't work. That's and what I, I was like. like <laughs> yeah, we've got our own business at home together because... As, as, it's either a mum or a dad. It sounds so like sexist to say it, it's but it's pretty much mums that do the school uh, drop offs and pick ups. And like there was this a your, few dads dad, there, yeah, but dad. me and but you don't see any couples together no. doing it. We're literally the only. Half of the grandparents are there today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But we're literally the only. Only couple that do. Couple parents that do the nursery drop off, uh, the school drop off and pick up um every day and that yep. was my dream like that was my dream i didn't really care about flying here there everywhere and doing this i just wanted to not have to worry about um before and after school club rushing off to work how i'm gonna sort cody out in the mornings and pick him up i just and wanted I'll, to be a mum that could take him to school and back and, and that, all, and I wanted get to do, to do it. all i wanted to do was leave personal training so i could spend more time with cody and now the fact is we're, we're horizontal for now the fact is we're, we're both yeah we will do kayla now the fact is we're both taking cody to school and even parents that are saying like Oh, what does Dan do? Thinking I don't work. You know what I mean? Like, but at the end of the day, like, this is what the choices gives us. We can work, you know, like, we do work, but we can make these choices. So the rewards get better. The work gets harder, but the rewards get better. But trust me, I know for a fact, we're going to be putting in this kind of work, like crazy, crazy hours for the next few years. And then guess what? We're going to be able to retire. Why? Because we've created a solid organization full of strong leaders, earning, all incredible, earning, crazy money. earning incredible money, doing their own thing, going on their own holidays, enjoying time with their families, teaching others to do the same. And, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's just creating leadership because the results get so much better. So that is really a breakdown of the journey. Like it's so, so is. And like I said, this biz, I've been in a, quite a few businesses and this business is so simple. I was a fully qualified gas engineer. That's bloody hard and that's confusing. There's so much you need to learn. You have to re-qualify every single year and get retrained every five years. This business, you sell a product, you tell someone about the, about the, about the company, you teach them how to sell a product. Pretty right? much. That's it. Right, that's it. Don't overcomplicate things. It's so easy to overcomplicate this business and over the simple things. Just do the basics. Master the basics before you try to do, you know, the in-depth skills. Once you've marked, mm -hmm. and you know what? Even we still say, even we've not fully mastered the basics. No, yet. I don't feel we you have. Know, I don't feel like we've mastered the basics yet. I feel like we do a pretty good job of it but we still haven't mastered the full basics yet. You know what I mean? And we probably won't do to about another three, four years. They always say in network marketing, your, what was it, your first year is your... Well, this is what I actually made up. I said your first year is like your warm-up year where you're yeah. literally like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really understand the industry. And you're kind of, you're one foot in, you're kind of a bit in and out. That's kind of, I call it like your kind of your warm up here, you're testing the water. And then your second year is like re where you're really learning the skills. You're kind of learning now. You're not really implementing yet. You're kind of learning more. Implementing, but still major learning phase. Um, and then from that on um, is when you're going to start seeing more results. So I always say the first two years, um, of course, you can make a good income in them two years still, mm. but don't expect um, it can happen. Like we've proven yeah. that it can happen, and many people in this team have proven it can happen. But I always say, like, um, 
I go the expectations that two years on, then that's when you're going to start earning the big, big, big money. But many people, including ourselves, have earned crazy income um, within a few months, within a year, within 18 months. We're only a two and a half year old team. So we, we, we're in theory all still in our uh, um, warming up learning phase. And I, said, <laughs> I said this to Inglo at the instruments. I was chatting to Inglo as well. And I said, you know, I was, trying, I was saying, oh, you know, we're only a, um, a, a two and a half year old, old, old business. And she was like, what you guys have done in two and a half years is beyond incredible. She goes, she's like, it, it really, really is, is crazy. And all I can imagine is what's going to happen the next like five, seven, half, ten years. And that's what you guys have got to keep thinking, you know, like, because the results are incredible. And this can happen for and this can happen for anyone, okay? And I love saying this because at the end of the day, we ain't no one special. I was a drug addict for ten years. All right, you know, we I wasn't. <laughs> I've, I've never touched drugs or smoked cigarettes. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut her over there and start getting her a halo over there. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, like we're no one special. You know, we used to live in a little tiny two up, two down house that you didn't have enough room to swing a cat in it. You know what I mean? And we and, had two cats. Yeah, and we had two cats and a baby and a boy. And our living we our living room was a combination of a living room, toy room, office. Our dining room was a combination of a dining room, office. Um, uh, uh, utility rooms at the what at the mm. tumble dryer in there as well. You could barely get two people in the kitchen, and upstairs just had, and downstairs had the bathroom, and upstairs you had two bedrooms. And there's people, that in this, was it. there's people in this call that have been to that house, and we've held little, tr we've held training sessions there mm. in like the tiniest living room yeah, ever. And, you know, and so at the end of the day, like no one, we're nobody special. Do you know what I mean? Like Hazel's from the corporate world. Do you know what I mean? Like, had experience in network marketing because she'd done two companies before this. But at the end of the day, when you come to a new, when you come to a new company, even if you're 20 years in the industry, you're still brand new in that in that in that company. You know, I'm an ex gas engineer, personal trainer. Do you know what I mean? We're nobody special. Hazel, like I said, Hazel's from the corporate world. <laughs> Web series. But at the end of the day, like this, what I mean, anybody can do this. You haven't got to be anybody special. We we love the fact we're both introverts as well. You haven't got to be an. You haven't even got to be an extrovert. You know, I don't like crowded spaces and lots of people. You know, there's some network marketers that are, that are crazy and will go talk to anyone, everyone. You know, I would rather, when I'm out publicly, have my headphones in, my head down, and not engage with people and just be in my own bubble. You know what I mean? Like, so you haven't even got to be a crazy extrovert to do this. You haven't. You haven't got to have the biggest confidence because you learn all these skills as you go along. Anybody can achieve what we've achieved and beyond it as well. Like, they really, really can do. It, it You can do. So... Yeah, we have been quite a while, but I hope this has been helpful. Um, maybe not now, but in the morning, Kelly made a really good point. If we could just put the ten, um, the ten journey that we've created, like kind of ten steps in your journey, um, into a post, then you can when you can tag your teams on it as well. So yeah, we'll definitely do that. It's a great shout that is for mm. sure. So we'll finish up now, but. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found it helpful. Even if you've taken two things out of the ten away that you're going to implement, that is perfect that you're going to work on. Um, I, you'll see us tomorrow popping up in you know, the groups anyway. So it's not do, really do you know what I feel like we feel like we should do? Oh, right gosh. No, this is an idea, right? I just had this idea. Because one thing, what you always find is... You vote no, 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 no. Is people take screenshots of the live training we do. And they've always got either you like... Or no, me, like, what are you saying? I don't look like that. Uh, they have. Well, one of us about speaking. You're like, that's a nice one. And so, about to say, like, what we can right, do. Right, right. Okay, we're going to do a screenshot <laughs> now, and then you, we can actually have a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hope you won't get one while I'm like. And it always happens. Whenever people do, do and you always sit them, like, you get so many people take so many different screenshot the live video and they're all all different ones so use that one we just done not one of us way for like adding people like <laughs> the camera and that so yeah <laughs> i've got one of them over love <laughs> yeah, it okay right we'll let you go we'll let you go oh, that was in my ears sorry, screaming sorry okay ciao right. for now